Hey everyone, it's Debbie from EmotionallySensitive.com where you can learn DBT skills from anywhere in the world. What are DBT skills? I'm sure I'll get into it in this video. So I took a bit of a survey and a lot of people relate to the issue of abandonment and borderline personality disorder. So I just wanted to talk about that for a minute or two from a couple of different perspectives or from a couple of different angles. So the first being that, yes, a lot of us who have BPD or BPD traits did have some type of abuse and some type of neglect, some type of history like that. Not everyone. So there are cases where people had um, childhoods that were absent of those things, but they still went on to develop BPD. But I'd say the majority of the people that I work with and my personal story myself is that there is that history. And so when there's abandonment, when there's rejection in early childhood, or when anything happens during the critical years of our development that is traumatic or really not healthy or not on course with what is the norm for who we are and, and where we are in terms of our culture and our family and where we live and what the expectations are, it can really set us up to have some dysfunction later in life. So that's what I've come to learn personally. That's what I've come to learn in my studies. And that's what I've had shared with me, both with my students or from my students and as well as from professionals that I have spoken to. And so it's no big surprise that someone who is emotionally sensitive, who has BPD traits now as an adult, may have that criteria because fear of abandonment is actually a criteria. It's actually a diagnostic criteria that one may and often does have if they have borderline personality disorder. And this involves a fear of abandonment and rejection to the point of not just when the scenario or the situation shows evidence that this may be happening, to where you know another person would objectively look at the situation and say, oh yeah, he's probably gonna leave you or she's going to leave you. But it's also a fear of a perceived abandonment. So it's, or imagined, I believe is the word that's used in, um, in the clinician's manual, is that even if there's this imagined fear that someone is going to abandon us or leave us, it will trigger the same types of responses and reactions and emotions and behaviors that seem really irrational to other people who don't experience this. So one of the things that helped me with this, because it was a major issue for me for so many years, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm actually in recovery from BPD, which means I no longer meet enough of the criteria for the diagnosis. So I'm actually considered to be in recovery or in remission. And, but this was one of the major criteria for me is that everything was assigned to me that someone was going to leave me every, you know, I was just so, for lack of a better word, paranoid, uh, that, you know, certain things that were said, or if I made a mistake, if I messed up, if I wasn't good enough, if I wasn't pleasing a person, um, thinking like in the context of relationships, um, if the person was having a bad day and they seemed irritated, it my mind didn't go to thinking about how was your day, is everything okay, is something maybe going on at work? It went to, oh my God, this person's sick and tired of me, they're gonna leave, and then I would behave and react from that place and it was really confusing for the other person. And I know a lot of people have spoken to me in my classes about that too, saying that yes, that's, this happens for them as well to where they're interpreting little things as being indicators that someone is going to leave or abandon them when the other person is not feeling that way and it's not the case and it's confusing for the other person and then the other person sometimes feels this obligation to just really reassure 
and um, sometimes they start to feel burned out because they're like what in the world can I possibly do to convince you that I'm not going to leave and then it can get to the point unfortunately if we keep on keep on keep on doing it that that person can then get really burned out and then we're actually doing the exact thing that we don't want to do which is push them away and alienate them which if that goes on for too long they may be uncomfortable and unhappy enough and want to leave and then and then it can seem like okay well this just proves that everybody leaves everyone rejects me and we don't often see because I didn't see it for years that the part that we're playing in it with unskillfulness and not having the tools to really communicate and express that fear from a place that is not off-putting to other people but still allows us to take care of ourselves to get a certain amount of reassurance but to learn how to reassure and validate ourselves and our feelings we don't know how to do that and then it becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy that people are going to leave and I just want to say that it doesn't have to be that way you know if you identify this if you hear what I'm saying and feel like okay this is my story I want to stop doing this you can stop doing this. And I mentioned DBT at the beginning of this video and DBT stands for Dialectical Behavior Therapy. And it's a set of skills that can be incredibly helpful for emotion management and emotion dysregulation and emotional sensitivity, all of which I suffered from greatly and am doing a lot better. I will probably always be an emotionally sensitive person. I will still get triggered and have emotion dysregulation but my life looks a lot different now that I have these skills because I'm making different choices. So I'm having different outcomes and I'm extremely passionate about this and I teach it. So that's what DBT is all about. And you can learn more at emotionallysensitive.com if you're interested. But I really want you to, I want you to consider having some compassion for yourself if you do have this particular issue. And if you have someone in your life who's been getting kind of irritated, maybe you want to show them this video and say, hey, I just had an aha moment and I realize I'm doing exactly, that was one of my cats, I'm sorry. I was doing exactly what I didn't want to do, which is push you away. But I'm just at the same time so afraid that you're going to leave and I need to work that out. I need to deal with what that's all about because there's some past stuff that's tainting my perception and what I'm doing right now and, and in this relationship, you have to use your own words and it has to come from a place of authenticity and what you really feel. But if I had come across a video like this back in the day when I was in the thick of my symptoms, I can imagine that I would say, oh my gosh, so-and-so guy, you have to please watch this because it explains what I'm going through and I want you to know that I'm going to do something about this and I'm going to get some help and I'm going to you know learn some skills and do what I need to do so that I can start resolving this so that I can do better in my relationships so fear of abandonment it's a very real thing it's a very real thing even when it's in response to an imagined threat of rejection or abandonment and we can learn to love ourselves through it to have more compassion and to explain to those in our lives what it's all about and what we're doing to take care of ourselves and to grow and to get better. So thank you guys so much for watching. Looking forward to catching you in the next video, seeing you on social media. I'm on Twitter at DBT Path. I'm on Facebook, Debbie of DBT Path. I have a blog at healingfrombpd.com. And of course, as I mentioned, my main home online is emotionallysensitive.com. Thank you so much, you guys. Have a great rest of the week, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye for now.